Hello everyone, welcome to Living Life. We make thousands or more decisions every day, regardless of size and importance. There are decisions that we have to put our thoughts to make. Some are made unconsciously and immediately, and some are made consciously with careful thoughts. However, when the situation goes south and we are anxious and stressed, we oftentimes make decisions that we later on regret so badly. We criticize our own stupidity for not having thought more carefully. But when you go back, that decision was strangely at the time the best option that you could ever think of. Neuroscientists have studied in depth to understand why we make bad mistakes. And it is an interesting topic well worth the time to read articles about them because it will allow you to evaluate how you make decisions. And in today's passage, we see Lot and also his daughters make the best decisions they could ever think of in their moment of desperation. However, the Bible clearly guides the readers that their decision was not entirely right. So let's look at the passage and meditate on it so that we could hopefully examine ourselves and see how we should make our decisions before our God. Genesis 19, 30 through 38. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old and there is no man around here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him, so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Maub. He is the father of the Maubites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. So first, let's take a look at Lot's decisions made in today's passage. He decides to settle on the mountains. Initially, he clearly said to the angels that he wanted to go to Zoar because he couldn't flee to the mountains. He said this disaster will overtake him and he will die. He believed that his life can be spared if he's allowed to go to Zoar. As if he has never said this, his fear eventually leads him out of Zoar and into the mountains, bringing him and his daughters into a cave. Verse 30 testifies, Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. Well, talk about a tragic turn of events in one's life. From living with Abraham, his source of blessing, to a cave with nothing. Lot decides to move up to the mountains because he was afraid to stay in that small town, Zoar. But why? The angels clearly said that I will not overthrow the town you speak of. Some might say it's understandable that he is afraid because of the scale and the magnitude of the catastrophic judgment he experienced. Plus, he has also lost his wife to this event, which all of these could have left him very much traumatized. All that he can do is continue to find a place where he can hide and protect himself. But little did he remember that God had just saved him by his mercy. And this ignorance leads to his next bad decision that is implied in today's passage. From the beginning of Lot's daughters devising their plan to get impregnated, to the duration of pregnancy and delivery, we notice how silent Lot is. The Bible may be intentionally keeping Lot quiet throughout the span of at least one or more years in order to highlight his ignorance. If he was ignorant to thank God of his mercy in the beginning for saving him and his daughters, then he is continually ignorant about his daughter's tragic decisions for themselves. He should at least as a father take responsibility to 
let his beloved daughters find their suitable husbands so that they can continue the family line. However, he is silent and ignorant to this turn of events. What Lot shows us is that fear of our own survival will make us forget that we have been saved by God's mercy and you end up making decisions strangely to run away from God. And when in truth, he's the one we should run to. Plus, ignorance will make us uh, disgustingly callous to regrettable decisions that our beloved ones make, even if that involves me. Even if people around you make the most atrocious decisions because they can't think of any other better ways, you will still decide to remain ignorant and silent. And that's probably because you forgot to thank God and to depend on Him. Then how does thanking and depending on God allow you to be less ignorant? God's mercy and grace allows you to see how He cares for His people. Rather than diving into your own miserable self and remaining ignorant, your relationship with God allows you to see a larger horizon of God's mercy and compassion uh, that are directed to everybody out of His surpassing grace and love. So you begin to care less of your own misery and more of others' needs before God because there have been a great change of perspective. You see less of you and more of God's people. And in that sense, Lot was totally ignorant because he totally lost how to think and to depend on God. And due to that loss, he became fearful and ignorant and makes decisions that further separates him from God's blessings. Now, second, let's look at Lot's daughters, which is more important in today's passage considering the length that the Bible deals with. I mentioned about neuroscience behind making bad decisions in the beginning. Well, in an article written by Robert Pearl, he writes that when we are anxious, our brains causes us to perceive the world around us in ways that contradict objective reality, distorting what we see and hear. He further states that this powerful shift in perception is unrelated to our intelligence, our morals, or past behaviors. In fact, we don't even know it's happening, nor can we control it. Therefore, in conclusion, he says that we don't consciously decide to act a fool. Rather, once our perception is distorted, we act in ways that seem reasonable to us, but foolish to observers. This helps us understand what the daughters are going through. Well, if we were in their situation, how confident can you say that you could have made your choices differently? With the fundamental truth, as God stated, that every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, we are more or less prone to make the similar bad choice that the daughters have made, especially in that distorted situation. And this is fundamentally because all they have is their heart's inclination to do what they think is right in their eyes. The older daughter says, as is the custom all over the earth, all she has remaining in her heart is the ways of this world and nothing from what she could have learned about the God of Abraham. In that sense, she makes her best possible choice when in fact it was a foolish decision. Little do they remember that they have been saved by God's grace, and little do they know that their children, Moab and Ben-Ami, would grow into a nation that will be a nuisance to Israel. So in conclusion, we can't say that we will never make any stupid mistakes. Under the right circumstances, we too may well make the poorest decision when we begin to lose our grasp of God's mercy and care for us. Thus, we have to continually push ourselves to remember to thank God, to depend on His continual grace, and to ask for His provision whenever we are in a desperate and devastating situation because God will do all that He can to save us, to lead us to life, and to lead us to Him. So please remember that we too are weak, that we need God and His grace in order to make the best possible decision before God. Let us pray. Father Lord, 
Help us and give us wisdom. Let us discern what is right before you. Always, through your Spirit, guide us so that we could do what is right before you. Not depending on what we see and what we think is right, but rather depending on you and your word and your guidance. I ask this in your Son's name. Amen.